What's up, guys? Welcome to week 30 of Books Being Sick. I am Nick. Thanks for being here. We are 30 weeks in, 30 videos. More than that, actually, because I did do two videos a week for a little stretch there. But either way, what? Nice. <laughs> That's exciting. Happy, uh, happy for that. I have a fun video here for you today. Actually, lots of book stuff. Um, lots of, lots of, lots of book stuff to talk about, including a book that I feel like you absolutely need to read. I will start off with that just so that it's not like, oh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Because if you watched my video last week, you probably have an idea of what that book is. And it's a book that I would just, if you can find a copy, I would highly encourage you to read it, especially if you liked. Um, whoops, especially if you like this book. If you like this book and this this one tickled your brain as it did mine, I do, I do really think you're going to love Hard Rain Falling by Don Carpenter. This book is just... How do you explain these types of books? It, it's, it's, we're following a guy's life and we're just getting slices of his life, you know, big moments, small moments throughout his life, and then it just ends and you're... It really... It's one of those books that just similarly to the John Williams one, makes me contemplate life and just realize how weird life is. I'm like, this is all it is. This is all it is. You know, it's it, it really, it just, again, itches my brain in a way that is a kind of hard to explain, but just a fantastic book, beautifully written book, very, some strong language, some very kind of, I would say, graphic scenes in this one compared to the John Williams one. So be prepared for that um, if you're going to give it a go. This one can be kind of hard to find, I'm told, especially if you're in the UK. It can be pretty expensive. Um, but I don't know how Kindle works. I don't know if Kindle is like a worldwide thing, but it is on Kindle if you're trying to find it, if that helps, if you have a Kindle. To give you like a really kind of quick idea of what this is about, we are following Jack, who was our main guy in this book. We're introduced to him as a teenager uh, in the pool halls of Portland, Oregon, he's kind of just griming around, trying to survive in the pool halls of Portland, these grimy, seedy kind of places. And the way that Don Carpenter writes uh, these pool halls is they're just so alive and real, and I can just picture them perfectly in my brain. And it's in these pool halls early on that we are introduced to a few of Jack's friends that kind of come in and out of his life throughout the remainder of the book, namely Billy. And they are there are some scenes with Billy in the pool halls trying to win money and it, it's, it's just so alive and vivid and re I just really really I really really loved it I really loved reading those scenes so so much um this is this is about Jack's life and it, it's 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 really good it'll break your heart it'll make you sad it'll make you angry it'll make you laugh but it is um it is a book I highly highly recommend this is a definite easy top three for me this year easy top three no no question about it if you can find a copy Definitely give it a go. New York Review Books does such an unreal job at finding these finding these books, you know? Because this was not... I, I did a little search on this. This was not popular when it came out. You know, it did okay. It came out in the 60s, did okay, and then just kind of disappeared. And it's kind of been seeing a bit of a revitalization lately, thanks to a few people on the internet. And um, I really hope that that keeps going, because it deserves to be read. <laughs> it really is. It really is fantastic. So that is a book that I really feel like you should read. I'm going to open up my list here so I can stay on track. I've got so many things... I don't want to say that, because every time I'm like, I've got a really short video for you today, it's like 20 minutes, and then when I'm like, I've got so much to talk about, it's like nine minutes, I'm just not going to say anything, even though I just did. I got saw a couple movies in theaters this week I want to talk to you about as well. One in particular that I think everybody should see, regardless of how you feel about being scared. <laughs> it was fantastic. I loved it so, so much. Moving right along, though, um, my wife and I decided to do a book swap, which I'm really excited about. Her and I read very different books. We don't, we, you know, we different styles, different genres. We don't cross over and read the same thing too, too often. I want to say the few times it's happened is Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, and there's another one, too, that I'm, uh, oh, A Little Life we both read uh, had very different opinions on. <laughs> I, I loved it. Um, and uh, yeah, so what we decided to do is basically pick a book for the other person to read. We're giving the other person 10 days to read it. So hopefully by the next uh, by next Sunday, I'll have a review on the book she chose for me because I'm excited about it because I know how much she loves this book. And I'm going to look for it right now because I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's at the bottom here. Ugh. 
is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. And this is one of her favorite books, and it's a book that I would never typically pick up and read myself, if I'm honest. And so, you know, excited to switch it up and, and see what's up. I, I think she's giving me this one as kind of like a uh, motivation to, uh, or like inspiration to try and be a little bit more like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but uh regardless excited to give this one a go i know she loves lucy score and i know a lot of people love lucy score so i'm hoping for just kind of like an, a fun light-hearted time but i don't know what i'm in for i honestly don't maybe it'll be a little more heart-wrenching than i'm than i'm expecting the book that i chose for her may not come as a surprise i was obviously going to pick a stephen king book because i love stephen king and i want her to love stephen king but there's more to it Earlier this year, she was going to join along in my Dark Tower read for the book club. We're kind of doing a read-along of Dark Tower along with the main book. And so she started with Gunslinger. And so her Stephen King journey started with Gunslinger. And I would say that's probably the worst place to start. Not that it's a bad book, but it is... It's just not... In the Stephen King universe, it's not the book you want to start with. Because it's confusing and it doesn't really give you a good idea of what Stephen King books can be like, in my opinion. And so... There are two that I always recommend people start with if they're starting their Stephen King journey. One being Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery is one of the more scary ones, but it is it, it's got a lot of heart and it's a lot it's a really fun ride. And the other one, the one that I picked for Lindsay, is this one here, Misery, um, by Stephen King, of course. This one is, I think. An equally good time. It's it's very hard to pick one over the other. I, they're they're both pretty much like on the same level for me. And the reason I chose Misery is because Lindsay had a uh, is obsessed with cats and had a pretty traumatic experience with our past cat. And so I'm avoiding Pet Cemetery for her and going with Misery. Misery has some of the most fun dialogue in it of all time. Annie and Paul, their conversations with each other are some of the funniest, weirdest, scariest things you'll ever read, and they're just so unique as well. Annie Wilkes as a character is one. Of the most unique scary characters of all time so i'm hoping she enjoys that again by next sunday i'm hoping we'll both be done uh things we never got over and misery and we can both jump on here and kind of give our thoughts on it uh and and maybe do it again because i'm i like that <laughs> okay real quick i'm uh, just going to share a couple book pickups before we keep going here i've i kind of am a, in a bit of a non i've got I've, at least when i was at the bookstore i was in a non-fiction itch sort of situation, and so I picked up Guns, Germs, and Steel. This, I just saw, won the Pulitzer Prize, like, 20 years ago, and so I was like, oh, that's probably good, and so I picked it up. I actually have no idea what this is about, but uh, the title got me, and I just, you know, it might just be one of those ones I can pick up here and there and be like, oh, I'm learning, and this is good. But maybe not. And this one, I just thought the cover was pretty. It's called Paris 44. I believe this is about... Well, this is obviously about World War II, uh, and I just, that's all I know about it. The shame and the glory. So we'll see what's up there. I think this is a new one that's just out by Patrick Bishop. Um, I, that's all I know about it. I can't, re unfortunately, can't really say a whole lot more. I just, just kind of like grabbing based on feel uh, at the bookstore. Moving on to, actually, let me talk about The Dark Tower, because I was supposed to read Wizard and Glass this year as part of the read-along, but what ended up happening was I was sitting here uh, three or four days ago just kind of staring at my bookshelf, and I knew I needed to start Wizard and Glass, but then I just was looking at The Grapes of Wrath by Steinbeck, and I was like, yeah, I really wanted to read that. I was really excited to read that. I loved Of Mice and Men so, so much. I thought it was brilliant, and I really love Steinbeck's writing in that, and so I, I picked it up. I picked up The Grapes of Wrath and just started going. I'm on chapter 14 now. Um, getting to the halfway point and having a really hard time putting it down. It is very, 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 very good. Something about that guy. I don't know if you know, like Steinbeck, decent writer, actually. As it turns out, pretty good at doing what he what he does. And so I've been really enjoying that. I'm going to keep going with this because I am just enjoying it so much. And Wizard and Glass, I'm, I'm kind of in a... Uh, advantageous position here because for next month we're reading the wind through the keyhole wait is it the wind through the keyhole or is it song of Sea? uh it's wind through the keyhole so this is the next one and uh what's nice about that is this is a shorter one and so I, i'm gonna do both of these next month so that i can stay on top of it so wizard and glass and wind through the keyhole i will be reading next month to kind of stay on track with the uh with the um with the dark tower read along um i will tell you about the Book club winner. So August's sick book club book is going to be, it's been decided. It really went back and forth between Swan Song and Cersei by Madeline Miller. 
And uh, I know there were a lot of people gutting for Swan Song. A lot of people wanted Swan Song. I would have been psyched on Swan Song because there's a lot of people that keep telling me I'm going to love it. But I love Madeline Miller's writing, and so I was really excited for Cersei as well. And Cersei, Cersei, Cersei is the one that took it. I cannot wait. I honestly can't wait. I'm excited to dive right into this on August 1st. So if you are kind of just loosely following along with the book club and aren't on the Patreon, this is the book we're going to be reading. So I'll have like little updates here on, here and there on it if you want to just kind of loosely follow along. Um, Song of Achilles is one of the best books I've ever read. And so I'm expecting this to be, I don't know if as good, but even if it's not as good, it's still going to be really good because Song of Achilles was the best. So Cersei is the book club book for August. I'm excited about that. Merch, real quick, before I forget, I do have um, black Spinebreaker and black Books Are Sick shirts in the merch shop right now. They will be in there until tomorrow night, tomorrow being Monday, the uh, 29th, or the, the the morning of the 30th. I'm not sure. It's it, it's I, I'm not going to leave it open for too, too long, but they are there right now. If you're interested in one, um, a lot of people were asking for black shirts, and so uh, they are there. And there are also kid sizes as well. There are youth sizes in there this time. Just look for the description that starts off with kid size. I may try to make it as obvious as possible. Um, I'm excited for that because I definitely want to have some kid sizes for my own kids, so it's more of like a selfish reason, but the kid sizes are available there. Pre-order, it is a pre-order, so again, um, if you place your order, it will take a few weeks for the stuff to come in and for me to send it out, but link is there, uh, or I'll, li I'll link it down below for you, as well as the book club if you're interested in either, either of those. Movies. Okay, so, I saw, first off, I saw Twisters. I really like Twisters. <laughs> I thought Twisters was great. I went in with really low expectations um, because the original Twisters movie is Twister movie. Sorry, is one of my favorites. My my dad took me out of school to go see it when it came out, and that's one of my favorite memories. I would say I really loved that movie so so much. I remember immediately I was like, I want to go storm chasing. I want to go tornado chasing. This is what I want to do for my life, and it's just one of those movies that really kind of gets you excited about uh, weather. <laughs> um, and so you know, I'm not usually a fan of these legacy sequels that they do where they're like, oh, like people really love this in the 80s and 90s. Let's just kind of like try to revitalize it in a weird way. I'm not typically a fan of that, but I think that they did a really good job here, and I it's I, I think it's its own thing. You know, a few little nods to the to the first movie, but not... I, I actually prefer it when they kind of just leave the, the other one alone and try to make it their own thing. And I think they did a good job at that. You know, they weren't constantly doing callbacks at all. It, it wasn't like that. It was very much its own story, and I thought that they did a great job. It's just a fun... It was a fun tornado movie that I had a good time in. You know, it wasn't corny. Well, I, I won't say it wasn't corny. They're... You know, the, the main guy that people are obsessed with. What's his name again? My wife is uh, is in love with this guy. I can't remember his name. The cowboy hat guy. Um, whose truck, like, kind of sticks to the ground. A few corny moments in that sense, but it's, it's, it's a really fun time. Now, the movie I saw last night is one that I've been itching to see since it came out. Because I'm a big horror movie fan. And so is my wife. And Long Legs is a movie that has been really pumped up. Obviously, people, a lot of people are like, this is the scariest movie that's ever been made. And I'm not a big fan of that sort of dialogue when it comes out because it happens every single year, multiple times a year. You know, this is the funniest movie that's ever come out, the scariest movie. Scientists have proven this is the 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 most the scariest movie that's ever, like I'm not I'm not a big fan of of any of that and so I went in not expecting a scary the scariest movie ever and I think that's really going to help you if you go see Long Legs don't go into it expecting to be terrified now that being said it is scary <laughs> okay it is a very scary movie but scary in a way that I was not expecting it's more of a psychological sort of thriller. And so, a lot of the time, the, the scariest moments for me, honestly, were in the cinematography. I thought the cinematography of this movie was fantastic. It's one of those perfect horror cinema, cinematography. I can't, I'm not, unfortunately, I should have looked up who the cinematographer was, but they did a fantastic job because almost every scene, I'm, ju I'm just scanning the back. You know, I'm kind of, every frame is set up so, so nicely that you're kind of just looking around the whole time. You're like, something's coming, something's coming. <laughs> you know, it's one of those. It really kind of, it really kind of builds up inside of you. And I thought Nick Cage did a great job. And I thought all the actors did, did fantastic. Uh, the, 
the the ending is is from what I've seen online a lot of there's a lot of kind of back and forth on how it ended. Do people love it? Do people hate it? I'm on the love it side. I thought I thought it was totally satisfying. I really actually liked. I actually really liked it quite a bit. And I thought the the uh, the the mom. Um, if you've seen Long Legs, I thought the mom was. Yes, almost scarier than Nick Cage. <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought just just such such a such a great theater experience too. If you can see it in theaters, I obviously would recommend doing that because again, the cinematography and the tenseness I don't know will translate as well to a small screen. Seeing it on the big screen and seeing those big shots and just kind of look again, kind of trying to figure out what you're looking at and uh and wait for something to happen really kind of is what makes it as scary as it is anyway love long legs <laughs> what can i say um so go see long legs and then read hard rain, hard rain falling by don carpenter and you'll just be having the best week of your life i think that's all i got for you today let me do a quick uh thing yeah yeah that's it yeah did okay look at us go okay this has been week 30 of uh oh you know what i want to say just a quick thank you for all the comments on last week's video. That was really, really kind. Uh, you know, it's it was kind of a if I'm if I'm honest, it was kind of a spur of the moment decision. Not a spur of the moment decision, but it was it was a very recent decision. Still trying to figure out what all this uh, is going to mean for me. I'm not my my wife points out to me oftentimes that I'm not a big fan uh, of labels. <laughs> and I know that makes it sound like don't put me in a box, man. But <laughs> it's just uh, you know not so I'm trying you know just trying to figure out what this means for me. But I loved reading all those comments. So. so so fun and so nice to, uh, not, not, fun. it's just so, uh, um, uh, tummy warming to, to read all of these, uh, messages from people. So, so cool to see that so many people are kind of trying to do the same thing or figure out what works for them. Um, and so that is amazing. However, that has been, this has been Books Are Sick. Sorry. I should have had more coffee before this video, but this has been Books Are Sick. This has been week 30, 30 videos in. We're, we're on our, we're well on our way. Really appreciate you guys tuning into these every week. Again, this is the start of these videos coming out every Sunday between 3 and 6. So I'm, I'm already enjoying this very much. Having the schedule, I can already feel, is helping me out quite a bit. I will see you next week, next Sunday, between 3 and 6 for week 31. Hope you have a fantastic week of reading, and bye. <laughs>